Let the blue light signal shine a light for a monkey. Show him the way back to family. When his nightmare started, he was innocent and free. Now he's somewhere where he shouldn't be. Uh, you're a mother? A four, yes. A four. Yep. Um, two and girls, two boys. <laughs> two girls and two boys. Can I ask their ages? 15, 12, five, and two. Five and two. Do you have your hands full? <laughs> I do. I do very much so. Tell me a little bit about why we're talking today. If you can, tell me a little bit about your little boy, Michael, or monkey. I love that nickname. It is the sweetest nickname. What five-year-old isn't a monkey? <laughs> he has been since day one, um, constantly climbing, con just going all the time, nonstop. And um, even, even when he was born, his, you know, he was trying to roll over at four days. Um, <laughs> so it's like, oh my gosh, he's just a little monkey. And it is stuck with him the entire time. Um, I want, I'm here to talk about Michael. I want people to hear about him and hear about his story. Um, I, I want him home. He's missing. He's gone. Yeah. He went How long has it been now? 171 days. July 27th was the date? Yep. 2021? Correct. You're in Fruitland, Idaho? Yes. Your little five-year-old boy has been missing, as you said, for a very long time, since July 27th. Can you take me back to that day when he went missing? Can you tell me what happened? Um, I got up. That morning, uh, Monkey was laying on the couch. He was playing the Nintendo Switch. I had to be at work at 12.30 p.m. that day. Um, that was my eighth day of work straight. Um, I had started a new job. Uh, Tyler and I were working opposite schedules um, and getting it worked out. He had worked at that job for a few months prior. Um, monkey didn't want me to go to work. He wanted to play because we're always outside. It's summertime and we're always outside. He loves being outside. And that's what we do when I don't work is we're outside doing something at all times, whether it's camping, um, going to the park, playing football in the backyard, digging in the dirt. <laughs> Linda, Idaho is a great place to do that too. Yeah, it is. And right on the border of Idaho and Oregon, right? Yep. And there's lots of different places, um, Oregon and Idaho to go and do all these wonderful things. Uh, I went to work, was working my shift. I went to my lunch at about four o'clock and I called because I call always on my lunch break, you know, check on the kids, check out everybody's doing, you know, it's a handful when you got four kids by yourself. Yes. So Tyler was home with all the kids and, um, and is he monkey's dad or is he? So Tyler is Michael and buggy It's Aria, our two year old, uh, their biological father. Okay. Kira and Benjamin are from my first marriage. You have a, you have a, what is a blended family, a, an all American blended family. Yes, ma'am. Um, Tyler and I have been together for over seven years. So he's been a big part of, you know, he's helped me raise them. Okay. So he's like a dad to all four of them or a father figure at least. Yes. Yes. But my, uh, Tyler is Michael and Aria's biological father. Okay. Okay. I called, it was just a short, quick call. You know, what, how's everybody doing? Oh, we just came inside. We've been playing outside all day. Monkey's sitting on the couch um, playing the switch and Buggy's just went down for a nap. And I said, okay, you know, um, 
I'll see you guys tonight and told monkey I'd be home to tuck him in as I tuck even my 15 year old. I still do it. <laughs> uh, Good mother. <laughs> I told him that I'd see him tonight and that I loved him. And he said, I love you too, mama. And, and I told Tyler, I loved him and that I would see him later that night. And I got a phone call, which is odd. Uh, Cause I typically, and I don't really answer phone calls, but it was from Tyler and it was at 7.05. I thought it was 7.04, but it was 7.05, um, which was odd. I'm like, okay, what happened? <laughs> and he said he couldn't find Michael. And I was dealing with a customer at the point at that moment. And it's, you know, I, I don't answer my phone calls when I'm at work, but it was Tyler and Obviously, if he's, yeah, if he's calling me in the middle of my shift, there's something going on. Right. Otherwise, he would have just sent a text. Right. Um, he said, I was like, what do you mean you can't find Michael? And he's like, I can't find him anywhere. Like, I'm, I've looked through the house. And he was yelling his name. He had, was looking outside. And I was dealing with If not difficult, but a very specific kind of customer. <laughs> and um, fair, way, fair way to say it, yes. Yeah. So I just put my phone in my pocket. I left Tyler on call, you know, in my pocket. I had a meat coat on. Um, and I got done dealing with the customer, and I, or, oh, sorry, no, I, I, I picked it up in the middle of talking and to the customer too, and I was like, "Well, did you find him yet?" And it was pure panic, pure fear. And I panicked. And I, did, I set my phone down. One of my coworkers walked by, and I'm still trying to deal with this customer. And she, are you okay? And I was like, please go get my coworker, the butcher, you know. Um, he was out having a break. And I said, I have a family emergency. And at this point, I get I get completed with the customer and I walk into the office and he comes in and he's like, what's going on? And I said, Tyler can't find Michael. And I just kind of like stood there for a moment and Tyler's still on the phone. And I just kind of froze. And my coworker was like, go. And I ran. I ran. I ran to the locker room. I grabbed my purse. I ran out the store. I ran to my vehicle and I drove as fast as I could here and coming into the neighborhood at the park i saw a cop car at the park and how far I, away is your work to to here um so i work in payette idaho okay and i live in fruitland and typically it takes about 13 minutes to get to and from okay i got stopped at a red light at gateway and if anybody drives in Idaho. That's <laughs> that light takes forever. You always are sitting there. There's a lot of traffic through there because if it, it goes towards Ontario, Oregon and Ontario, Oregon's uh, pretty big. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So there's a lot of traffic through that area. And I got home. I didn't even park. I kind of just threw it in park in the middle of the road. Tyler was talking to a police officer and dad, Tyler's dad, grandpa, had just gotten home like a few moments before me, apparently. Um, he had been out getting a haircut and, you know, doing grandpa stuff for the day. Went and mm -hmm. visited some friends and got home and was met with everything that was going on. And dad drove out into the field, down the road into the field just to just to look and neighbors were out and I drove down to the splash pad, um, asked a couple ladies that were there and I didn't even get to ask them. They said, we haven't seen a little, little boy. And I was like, you haven't seen a blonde haired, blue eyed little boy come down here. And they said, no, you know, we haven't seen him at all. And I think I drove, it's, it gets blurry. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine. I drove up back up into the neighborhood. I drove down to the end of 9th and I was 
so, you know, screaming Michael's name, people were coming out and asking what was going on. And then there were people on their four wheelers, ATV, like just uh, side by sides, cars. Um, I think at 817, I called my boss and I was like, um, I, I, I can't, I can't find him. I can't find my baby. I don't, I don't know what to do. And she was here in a heartbeat. Take your time with her. It's okay. Yeah. Hi, yeah. sweet girl. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi. And she said, No touching. Okay, go with Sissy. Daddy will be home in a few minutes. Yeah. If you need to hold her, it's okay. Whatever no. you need. You want to sit over here with Mama? Mommy. You're welcome, Buggy. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> this is adorable. This is Buggy. This is Buggy, yeah. It's such a cute one. Hey, you. Can I say hello? Hello. This is my hello. oldest. Hello. This Hi. is Kira. This is Lauren. Nice to meet you. Am I saying that properly, Lauren? Yeah, you are. You are. Thank yes. You. Um, Hi, Joe. I called Kira. Uh, she had went to, yeah, I heard she had went with a friend. They had picked her up while Tyler was looking for Michael. Panicked, I had to know where all of them were at, at that moment. I, I needed to know they were safe. Yeah. We were speaking with police. Uh, Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue was here. It was definitely when it got dark because I remember when it started to get dusk, I I panicked. I panicking to Kira, the detective, like. It's getting dark. Why? Why haven't we not found anything? Seeing them come in, and why are they here? Why, why are the ambulances here? And they were just here to help. So, in other words, all the town came together to kind. Of, nobody really understood why he was missing. It was as as many bodies as we can get out there. Let's start looking for him. There were people from New Plymouth, Payette, and uh, Ontario, Oregon. <laughs> There, the streets were covered, um, cars, uh, people everywhere. The park, um, the fields, people were out with flashlights. And when it got dark, even before it got dark, the streets were covered in people and uh, families, kids on bikes, um, people putting their kids in strollers and just screaming his name. How big is the town of Fruitland? A little over 5,000. Okay, so I'm sure the word was spreading quickly. It's a close-knit town, and so people, volunteers, were yeah. out. Yeah, um, everywhere. And at this point, you're realizing, you know, when you first hear your child's missing, I'm sure there's a panic, but it's going to be okay. And now at this point, what are you feeling? to this day at this moment sorry that day that day that night as it's been hours you know you hear the phone call at work and now you're home and it's been hours what are you thinking somebody took him i didn't i didn't believe that he just wandered off and got hurt or got stuck into something there was no there was no way with the amount of people that were here immediately and um, continuously through the night that, especially when it hit dark, um, did everybody else seem to understand that too, that was helping you look or were there some people that thought he might've wandered off? There was a lot of people that thought he might have wandered off. I mean, there's a lot of fields. There's a lot of irrigation canals and everything like that. But Michael is very familiar 
with the hazards of irrigation canals. He's never been out in the fields. He's never wandered out in the fields. Um, honestly, if he if he would have wandered anywhere, he's attempted once to get to the park by himself. And that was because he overheard his big brother going. And this was a little over a year and a half ago, I want to say. Okay. But he was caught wandering down ninth by grandpa and because grandpa was coming home and he hadn't been out by himself out front like that yeah you know. when he's five you know five you're five you're five years old you're a little bit more aware of the dangers right. um it's not that he was he wasn't two he wasn't you know your buggy's age so so you sense this as his mom that someone took him. Honestly, um, within the first hour that I was home, when I called my boss, uh, I had that panic. I had that panic because we should have been able to find him. He wouldn't have gotten that far. Not in not in the time frame that but um, from when Tyler was watching bug or changing buggy because she woke up from nap uh, to smoke a cigarette and eat or order pizza. And Michael's not in the backyard playing. And Michael's not in the living room. He's nowhere in the house. He's not on our street. When Tyler, you know, was yelling for him, he couldn't have gotten that far. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in flip-flops. I had just I had just bought those flip flops for him three days prior because he kept putting mine on, and so I was at work and I seen him and I was like, oh, perfect, they're his size, awesome. So he was just learning how to walk in flip flops. A and milestone, you, right? A summer right. milestone. <laughs> and Black you know, when they first are learning how to walk in flip flops, it's not really walking; it's kind of there's you know scooting along. Yeah. So. What was everybody else saying out looking? They couldn't believe we were, weren't finding him. Um, you know, does he, is there a friend's house he would go to or, you know, where did you last see him? And <laughs> um, Right, right. And at this point, I'm sure your entire neighborhood and everyone that knew him knew that he was missing yeah what uh what law enforcement were out looking for him at this point um fruitland pd was here okay uh payette payette um forgive me when the time is because it all kind of went into each other but we had sure. we had boise boise police department garden city weezer Payette County or Payette Police Department, um, Fruitland Police Department, um, Star. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Right by Boise. Yeah. So we had a lot of um, law enforcement, surrounding law enforcement here assisting Fruitland PD. Okay. Uh, the fire department, uh, Fruitland Fire Department, uh, the EM, uh, Fruitland EMTs, um, St. Luke's. Uh, the St. Luke's, um, I don't know, it's the, their helicopter that transfers um, patients. Light. Yeah, yes, was out searching the fields. So uh, helicopter even was helicopter. Out. People with drones, um, community members that had drones. I think the Sand Hollow, uh, Sand Hollow Fire Department had brought theirs out. Um, Boise Police Department, I believe, brought theirs out also. Um, was there an Amber Alert done that night? No, there was not. Um, the Fruitland Police Department did try to get one issued, but there are six criteria, and they apparently are suggested criteria. They are okay. not. Not mandatory, but suggested. Right. 
um, one of the ones that Michael did not meet was that there was a known a vehicle or abductor. Okay. And two was that the, it was unknown if he was abducted. Which is interesting because when children disappear without a witness, that's why they're missing. You know, right. it's not known what happened. Exactly. Um, he did meet the requirements of them attempting within 12 hours to get one. Uh, he was entered in the NCIC. Um, basically, um, when he was entered into that, every police department in the United States would know if Michael was found where he belonged. Okay. So that goes out. And uh, uh, my understanding from what they told me that night that every, every law enforcement agency would have the picture of Michael, his information, where he went missing from. Um, that's one of their suggested, uh, requirements, I guess, rules. <laughs> okay. um, he was within, I want to say, two, two and a half hours after Michael was known to be missing. Hmm. Um, to be, another one was uh, to be known in intimate danger mm -hmm. or um, possible death. Right. He's five. I was just going to say he's a five-year-old who's alone. Right. There were four endangered missing persons alerts put out for him. One, I believe the first one was 8.20 and um, the last one I want to say was around 11.30 p.m. that night. It's called Code Red and it goes out via text message, um, email, phone call. But the thing is, is it's an elected app or okay. you, you have to be signed up to get that alert. It doesn't go out to every person's phone in the area like an Amber alert would do. No. Okay. So it did start out in um, our local neighborhoods around and then they, they spread it out. Uh, like count, they went county or like city, then county. Um, I'm not sure what the last, how far the last one went, but like I said, you have to be signed up to get that. There were, you know, lots of people on our front yard. And when one of the alerts did go out, there were um, some police officers that didn't even get it. Tyler oh, wow. and I didn't get it. And wow. finding out later. So yes, it can be an effective tool, but I do not believe it could have been, it was as effective as an Amber Alert would have been. So looking back, um, are those things that it sounds like you're very disheartened by that, that happened that night? Yeah. Yeah, I'm on a mission about that one. Okay. To, to change the Amber Alert, tell me about what you hope with that mission. <sighs> The suggested criteria um, suggested. That's, <laughs> I believe, honestly, um, law enforcement should be able to be use that at their discretion. Yeah. If they believe that a child has been, you know, they, extensive searches have gone on and no sign, what harm is it going to do to issue an Amber Alert? You're right. To find out there's a missing child on my phone. I never, I never have an issue with that, with that showing up on my phone. Right. You know, and I, there has been talk about, um, people becoming desensitized to it because if we issue an Amber alert for every time a child goes missing and say they're only missing for three hours or mm -hmm. whatever, I, 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 in my opinion, I, that's, I, I, I wouldn't care. My phone can blow up all damn day long. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But knowing the extensive searching that had already been done, what was the harm in issuing an Amber Alert for him? Right. Right. 
And at this point, she'd been missing how many hours, too? You, you were looking into the night. We, Tyler and I didn't stop. Um, I know Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue. Um, it was 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. There was community members still out 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it was about 7 o'clock. Yeah. What time did you have practice that morning? Uh, 8. 8. Um, the... Red Cross helicopter was flying around the field by, I want to say, 7.30 a.m., 8 o'clock. Okay. And you and Tyler didn't stop. You just kept. How do you stop, right? I mean. <laughs> Haven't yet. And it's freezing and still. Um, I know he's not here, but what else can I do? When you say you know he's not here, where do you think he is right now? What do we know now? That law enforcement saying that, the, you know, there's a possibility that he's been abducted. I believe and I know that he's been abducted because there's been so many searches. There's been so many resources used tell me what else has happened mm -hmm. what could what he didn't you know just vanish into thin air he didn't fly away i mean <laughs> right the canals have been searched you know yeah the canals they had divers in some of the bigger canals. Um, I remember um, at the end of our street, there's, there's a pretty big canal and it has a lot of overgrowth and it's pretty fast moving. A lot of the farm fields feed into that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were out front, we lived in our front yard for months. Um, There were fire trucks and ambulance and looking at the, you know, looking down the road and what is going on? Like, why are there sirens going off? Hmm. So I, I walked down there and, you know, there's a lot of FBI agents, there's law enforcement. Um, and the one FBI agent walked up and he's like, you really, you really shouldn't be here. And I'm like, the hell, I should be here. <laughs> like... <laughs> And I sat my ass down and my sister, apparently I wasn't breathing and I was watching them put dive, their dive stuff on. And then one of the firemen pulled this big hook thing off the fire truck and uh, I almost threw up right there and I had to get up. Um, so... My sister-in-law brought her vehicle down. We kind of sat there and waited. And there were people watching and just watching their body language and everything. It just, they didn't find anything. But just the thought, you know, what if he was? You know, what if? Yeah. I will never forget that feeling for the rest of my life. He hasn't been found in the water. He hasn't been found in any fields. He hasn't been found by helicopter. Has anybody seen anyone suspicious? Did anyone see anything? that day, any person? Not as far as I know. Um, they have identified almost 400 vehicles, I wanna say. That that went by? That were in, in, the, in the area. Um, if I remember correctly, what I was told that uh, 
every 30 seconds, a car passes through on eighth. And that is a, that is the only way to come in and out of the neighborhoods is coming on eighth. You can come off Whitley or the highway into eighth, but there's, unless you're using a farm road, there's there's not a lot of farm roads around here either. No, there's not, maybe. Okay. They've identified where all those vehicles were, where they were going, um, who they belong to. Uh, they, they don't say they're persons of interest. I do know that um, there is a white Honda Pilot that has yet to come forward. Okay, Some, something they caught on a surveillance. Yeah, camera. so there, so there is how they I, were able to um, figure out where all these vehicles were, and and they did a roadblock too at one point, um, finding out where everybody was going, how many people were in the vehicle, what address they lived at. Uh, there's CCTV, uh, CCTV. Your cameras coming in, and that's how they were able to catch those vehicles. Unfortunately, can't get it clear enough to see license plate numbers, but they're pretty damn good detectives, I tell you what. <laughs> um, and then there was a man with a white shirt and black shorts, dark facial hair, dark hair, walking through the park down and to the canal area behind the park. Oh, wow. Has his photo been released, even if blurry? No, no. no. Um, under my impression is that he was walking away from our neighborhood, not towards the time I, I, when Michael was missing. Okay. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know all the details on that. It is an ongoing investigation. So, and they're probably not, they're probably telling you a lot, but not everything. Is that exactly. Yes. And that's understandable. <laughs> a white Honda pilot though, that has been, that has not been identified. And to explain the geography and where your house is, Fruitland is sort of, as you kind of point out, a, you, you worked in a different city and you can drive through there and it's on the way to Oregon onto Ontario. Is that right? Could it have been someone passing through then possibly? Possibly. You can, you can get where we live. We live on kind of the outskirts of Fruitland. Um, the farther you get going towards the freeway, um, mm -hmm the off ramps on and off ramps, you can go towards Oregon or you okay. can go towards Boise. There are back roads that you can go follow through to like New Plymouth. And um, you can go, you can get to Boise from New Plymouth. You can, you could easily be on the highway and be gone. Okay. Have they checked offenders in the area? Yes. That was, uh, I think, one of the first things that they were looking into. I do know that for a fact. Um, where were you? Uh, parole officers were, I believe, brought in too, you know. Right, right. All of, all of the above. Uh, <clears throat> they searched every single person's garbage can in our neighborhood and the other three neighborhoods that are opposite of us on 8th. Do you, you know, as a mother, I'm a mother of a little boy. So you're living our biggest nightmare. You're you're living every mother's biggest nightmare. Um, I'm sure that you never thought you would be this mother. You know, being interviewed about your 
about your monkey, your Michael. Do you feel like these, um, that he's getting enough attention? Do you feel like people are aware of what's going on? No. <laughs> My beautiful daughter. No, I don't. I don't, I don't. There are people in Idaho that are just now learning about Michael's case, like hmm. that he's missing. So I'm trying to do everything I can to make sure my goal is to, I want everybody in the world to see his face. I want everybody to know about him. And we're going to be showing his face a lot tonight. Um, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, and like I said, you still have three other children and a partner and a job and you're searching for your son and you're trying to be a spokesperson and coming on here to talk. And so we want to do whatever we can to help. That's why I want to talk to you. And when I was introduced to you, I thought as soon as we can, as soon as possible, yeah. because that matters, you know, this isn't something we wait for. As you said, it's been 171, 71 days. What can we as the public do to help get the word out about your Michael? Share his picture. Um, don't forget about him. Just um, if you see a place that doesn't have a picture up of him, um, post a flyer, reshare a flyer. Uh, I get a, a lot of messages and I try, I, I try my best to respond, but um, it's not always, not always nice. Right. Um, but I just pointed out all the things you're up against and trying to do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we um, need to do things ourselves. Yes. If, if we, where do we go? What do we do? I'll have some links. Um, share his picture. Share his picture everywhere. On our social media, what else can we do? Um, are there posters to download or flyers? Um, or yeah, there is some on the Fruitland um, Police Department uh, Facebook page. Uh, I can try and I'm, I'm still learning all of the technology and everything like that. Uh, I'm getting better at it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I wish this wasn't the reason why um but there is a fruitland um community page that uh has a lot of pictures i share a lot in there um a lot of community community excuse me community members um share a lot of different things in there um, okay right now uh, and i'll have links to all of these sites that you're mentioning for those watching this right now head to the description of this video for i'll put you putting links there thank you mm -hmm. how did go ahead i was gonna say and uh you can support michael um if you find a blue light put it up please a blue please light color Front porch light. Okay. I can't imagine what you're going through, so. Um, hold on a second. Sorry, I'm professional. <laughs> it's I'm not unprofessional to have a <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> when you're a reporter, you're, you, you're taught to just stuff that down. You don't do that. <laughs> I didn't do that for a long time. Look where I am now. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. What a sweet, what a sweet girl. Um, so 
when you woke up the next day i didn't and oh you didn't wake up i didn't sleep next, you didn't sleep when the next I, day came yeah she had to force me to go to bed. <laughs> and you still didn't have your michael what were you feeling despair sadness and my heart was broken i is still broken um fear pure fear i actually um tyler had to pick me up i collapsed when the helicopter flew over Because it was a nightmare. Like this can't, this can't be fucking up. Sorry. It's okay. Safe space. We're not network news here. <laughs> I didn't believe this. This is happening. I still, I still. It's a never-ending nightmare. Yeah. Um. Um. How are you functioning today? Like I said, life goes on, you know, it's life. It's not going on for you, but it, you, like I said, you have to take care of your family and provide for them. How are you, how are you handling things today? This, you know, That's how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Kira's laughing because that is the, that is the hardest question. Um, it took a long time, uh, and people would ask, well, and, and it's, it's not anybody being mean or rude or anything like that. It's you just don't, know how to answer. don't know how to answer. Um, cause I don't know how I'm doing. I'm sad. I'm scared. I'm miserable. I'm uh, lots of counseling. <laughs> holding on you're surviving probably just <sighs> getting through each day yeah it sounds like law enforcement now believe along with you that michael was likely abducted although that was a doubt in their mind at first what changed their direction or their minds <laughs> The extensive searches, not, not finding a single sign. Um, they, they flew in special dogs from around the country. Uh, they did, uh, they brought in cadaver dogs. It was what, about three, three weeks ago three weeks ago they did okay i believe so and then uh along with the cadaver dogs they brought in um some scent dogs and went through acres miles and miles of fields farmland neighbors houses just so they could say for a hundred percent sure that they didn't miss anything And they didn't. They didn't. What is your, you know, <clears throat> I can't imagine a missing child. I can't imagine losing a child, right, to, to death. To not have an answer seems like it would be incredibly difficult to not know. Um, it's the darkest feeling I think you could ever have in the world. The not knowing. The not knowing if he's being taken care of, if he's happy, if he's okay, if he's hurt, if he... Every second of every day. 
you you don't know. So I don't think there could be any worse feeling in the world. Do you have hope? I'll never give up hope. I'll never give up faith. I, we're going to find him. We're going to bring him home. I believe that. Being in this situation, understanding what it's like to be on this, this side that so many you know, of us can't even imagine what you're going through. What do you want the public to understand or the public to know about missing children where we can help? Be supportive, be kind. Be... Families of missing children are living through hell on earth, not knowing where their baby is. And honestly, um, you will, you have no idea what you would do or what you would say or how you would act. There's been so much, so much of the, well, I would do this. I would do that. I pray, I pray that not one of those people ever has to feel a single ounce of of what we are going through on a daily basis. So until, and I pray that nobody ever has to, you've lived that situation or you've walked a second in that situation. Don't tell a mother or a father that you know what you would do because you don't know what you would do. So just be kind and be thankful that Pray that you never have to feel an ounce of this heartache or this heartbreak ever. Are, are law enforcement still actively looking? Are you afraid this is going to go cold? Are people looking? Oh, no. They're... No, it's what I meant when I said that I was afraid that Michael's case was going cold was because I... his case wasn't getting attention from public, I guess. But um, no, uh, there are some very, very, very dedicated officers, um, FBI agents. Uh, they, they live, eat, breathe, sleep, um, trying to find Michael, trying to find answers. So I have this faith in them. Is the biggest mystery right now then this white Honda pilot, is that something that we can hope might bring answers? I know they still want to talk, talk to whoever that was. I, I do know that. Um, I know they're following up on every lead and every tip that they get. They're not going to tell me every single one. And I kind of appreciate that because the ups and downs of all of it is... very difficult so you've given you've given me a long time and parenthood calls anything else you want to say thank you thank you for helping me and helping us get michael's story out there everyone that continues to share his story, share his picture, um, everyone who just continues to be supportive. Thank everyone. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you. We'll do our best and let's be in touch and we can do updates. We'll have you back and we'll do updates. And if there's anything else we can do, just let us know. Thank you so much, Lauren. You're welcome. You go enjoy your <laughs> children and I know that life calls yeah. and we'll do our part on our in our community for you thank you ma'am <laughs> you're welcome thank you mm -hmm. thank you how are you doing are you okay no <laughs> and that's okay to not be okay that was that was a good answer to be able to share yeah. is there something we can do for you <laughs>
Don't let anyone lose sight of my brother, please. That's my baby, too. We'll do our best. We'll Thank keep you. we'll keep Michael out there. Okay? All right. Thank you, Lauren. You have a good night. Okay, you too. Good night. Okay. Let the blue light signal shine a light for a monkey. Show him the way back to family. When his nightmare started. He was innocent and free. Now he's somewhere where he shouldn't be. So let that blue light signal shine a light for monkey. Show him the way back to family. There isn't any other color that really matters, it seems. Except the color amber, which we haven't seen. So let that blue light shine all across the country and show him the way back to family.